Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the media item properties, part one, in Reaper. Now, the media item properties are basically like the settings or the stats for any of our items in Reaper, whether they're audio, MIDI, or even video items. So, I have a project in front of me here with a kick track, a snare track, and a synth loop. And it sounds like this. So let's say we want to open up the media item properties for the synth loop. We would select it, go to the item menu, and choose item properties. Or we could right click the item and choose the item properties right here, or use the keyboard shortcut F2. Or if we're dealing with audio items, we could just double click the item like this. And that opens up the media item properties dialog. And like I said, this is going to show us all the settings or stats for the media item we select. But it's important to note that this dialog is dynamic. What that means is it's going to change if we select different items. So if we select the kick, the settings change for the kick, or the snare, or the synth loop. And it's also going to work on multiple items at the same time. So if we select all of these, this is going to reflect all the settings or stats for all the items at the same time. Now, it's also important to note that this dialog is completely non-destructive. So we can't break anything accidentally. If we change any of the settings, we can always change them back later. Nothing destructive is happening. So let's keep it simple and start with the synth loop. We would select it, then everything over here is based on that synth loop. Then right over here, we can see the position of the item. And it's based on beats, but we could change it to time, beats, or time code. Hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Let's put it back to beats, and we can see it's placed on bar 15. If we want to change it, let's move it to bar 16, and we can make that change by either hitting OK, which is going to close the window, or just hit Apply, which is going to apply that change without closing the window. Now we have to hit Apply or OK. If we just close the window, it doesn't make the change. So let's type in 16, and go down here and hit Apply, or just hit Return or Enter on our keyboard. Let's hit it and it moves the item to bar 16. We could put it back to 15, hit apply, and it moves it to bar 15. Then next, we could change the length of the item. We can see right now, it's eight bars long. Let's change it to one, hit apply, and it adjusts the length. We can change it to two beats, or one beat, and it changes the item just like that. Then if we go up over here, we have the fade in and fade out for our items. As you probably already know, the easiest way to create a fade in is to go up over here to the upper left corner, see how the cursor changes to a fade tool, and just drag to create a fade in, or go to the right side of our items and go to the upper right corner and drag to create a fade out. But if you have a situation where you know you want to create an exact size for your fade in or fade out, we could do it from here. Let's make a two second fade in. And we could change the shape right here to be linear or a slow fade. We could do the same thing for fade outs. Let's create a two second fade out, which we could see right here. And again, we could change the shape and hit apply to create that fade out. Now where it's really helpful is dealing with multiple items. Let's say we wanted to create a fade out for all these items over here. We could just select them, go to fade out. Let's set it 
to 250 milliseconds. Maybe change it to slow, fade out. Hit apply. And applies that fade to all the selected items at the same time. And it's also useful for deleting the fade in and fade outs as well. Just select the items and change this to zero. Hit apply. And it removes the fade outs for all the items selected. Now down over here, we have the snap offset. And if you're not familiar with what the snap offset does, if we turn on our grid and snapping, we move our item around, it's going to snap to the grid like this based on the beginning of our item. But if we go down here to the lower left of our item, our cursor changes like this. And we could drag the snap offset like this to put it in a different place. Let's say we put it right here on this transient. We could see it right here. And now with the grid and the snapping turned on, it's going to snap based on the snap offset instead of the beginning of our item like this. So it snaps based on the transient we put it on right here. And we can see where that's located in our item right over here. And we can change it from here as well. We could turn it off by setting it back to zero or set it to one second and it moves it right here or two seconds or any place we want. We'll put it back manually from here or setting this back to zero. So next we have the item time base, which is set up by default to be the default time base in our project settings, which we can see if we go to the project settings in the first tab, right down over here, time base for items. And by default, they're beats, position, length, and rate. But of course we could change them right here, or we could change it by item. So our default is basically this one right here, but we could use any of them or different ones on each item. Let me give you an example of why we would do that. If we keep it at the default and we change the tempo of our song, which sounds like this right now, let's change it from 125 to be 100. So now it sounds like this. And we can see that each item is stretched because the rate changes over here. 0 0.8 on each item. Now that makes sense for the synth loop. Because we want to time stretch it to match the new tempo. But we wouldn't want to do the same thing with a kick and snare because they're separate samples. So we don't want to time stretch those. We just want to change their position. So we'll switch them to be beats position only. So let's undo that tempo change and we'll leave the synth loop based on the default. But for the kick and the snare, we'll change those to beats position only, which will change their position on the ruler, but it won't change the rate. So the sound quality won't be affected which makes more sense for samples versus loops. Apply it, and now we'll change the tempo from 125 to 100, and now it changes the rate of our synth loop right here, but it doesn't change the rate of our kick or our snare. So the sound quality will be better because they're not stretched, but they're still gonna play in time. but the samples won't have their rate changed, just their position on the ruler. So it makes more sense for something like this. But in other situations, maybe you're working with video and you don't want that item to time stretch 
or even change its position at all. So then you might choose time for just that item and allow the other items to behave differently. We can change that in this section of the media item properties. But keep in mind, we can also change this on a track by track basis over here. This is a pretty large topic, so I've divided it into four parts. In the next video, we'll go to the next section of the media item properties. Thanks.